couple of years back, I made a video about increasing number of inputs of a Node MCU board using a multiplexer demultiplexer module and that works really fine and one thing was clear with me after that video which is जब भी कभी मुझे मल्टीपल इनपुट्स चाहिए विद लेसर नंबर ऑफ जीपीआई पिन आई डेफिनेटली यूज दैट मॉड्यूल बट विल इट वर्क फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग मल्टीपल आउटपुट्स एज वेल वॉट डू यू थिंक वेल डू क्लिक दॉज बटन एंड कमेंट बिलो विल इट वर्क फॉर मल्टीपल आउटपुट्स और नॉट डन विद दैट वेल लेट्स डू अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ रिसर्च So a couple of days back our favorite content creator Electro Noobs uploaded a video using that same module and covered all the things about it and he even tried to get multiple outputs using that module and he succeeded as well research complete right so ruko zara sabar karo well if you look at it carefully then he is controlling one led at a time but will it work for controlling all the leds simultaneously well Let us test it out. So here I have uploaded a sample sketch to glow all the LEDs connected to the Mux D Mux module. But as you can see, the LEDs are flickering. So you got the point. Using this module, we'll be able to control only one pin at a time. And if you want to control all the pin, we won't be able to do that simultaneously. It will have a kind of a delay in between. So we'll be observing the flickering uh, effect. We'll be observing this relay triggering effect and all kind of stuff. So now here comes the topic of our video which is to control multiple pins simultaneously using lesser number of GPIO pins and our target of this video is to control eight relays or eight LEDs simultaneously using just three GPIO pins. So yes that's the topic of our video and after watching this big intro if you seem to be interested in this kind of topics and contents well consider subscribing a channel because I come up with these kind of you know content in the field of electronics iot and automation on this channel every week well that being said let us start with controlling multiple outputs using lesser number of gpio pins sai cheez hai yaar it will be really very useful <laughs> let's get started before starting the video let me tell you one really interesting and useful feature of our sponsor ltm which is a pcb designer based software company and that feature is called as design review Using LTM you can add any member to your project and after that they can highlight any fault in the schematic or can report availability of components in the inventory on the PCB to your designer so that they can visualize this components and can work upon it to provide a smooth flow of PCB production even if they both are in any corner of the world so that's the design review feature and even you can try out this and many other features of LTM for free by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description as you'll be getting an access to free trial version using that link now let's start with our video so for achieving our goal we'll be using a serial in parallel out shift register now here two question arises first is what are shift resistors and second what is serial in and parallel out well let me tell you so shift registers are basically the combination of digital circuit in which output of one flip flop is connected to the input of other flip flop now if you don't know what flip flops actually is then flip flop can be considered as a digital memory which can store only one bit either 0 or 1 and as multiple flip flops are connected together we can shift the output of one flip flop to other flip flop and hence the circuit is called as shift register So generally there are four kinds of shift registers which are serial in serial out in which the input is given serially and we are also getting the output serially. Second is serial in parallel out in which we'll be taking the input serially while we'll be getting the output parallelly. And similarly we have parallel in serial out and parallel in parallel out. So we can choose any of those shift registers based upon our requirements and applications. So now coming back to our agenda which was to increase number of outputs with lesser number of gpio pins and to achieve this goal we'll be using a serial in parallel out shift register now let's have a detailed look about how this shift register will work how many inputs we need to connect how many outputs we'll be getting and everything about it so here i'm using this 74595 shift register ic and we'll be using it with our esp32 board and some leds as an output indicator and we'll be connecting them according to this connection diagram so that was all about the hardware part now let's see how to program it to actually use the shift register 
Okay, so here is the basic code to use the shift register using any of the microcontrollers. So the three major pins of the shift register are data pin, latch pin and clock pin. Now data pin is pretty simple as we are using the serial in parallel out shift register, there will be only one single input pin and that is nothing but the data pin. So from uh, data pin, using data pin will be sending a data serially. Now the data pin is connected to the digital pin 14 of our ESP32 board. Second is the latch pin and the clock pin. Both the pins are actually the clock pins but have the different different purposes. This particular clock pin is the clock of the shift register based upon which the data will be shifted from one flip flop to another flip flop. While this clock or we can say latch pin is responsible for locking the data into that particular flip flop or latching the data to a particular flip flop. Okay. Now, when we go through this code, the purpose of both clock pin and latch pin will be clear to you. Okay. After that, we have declared all the pins as output because all pin will be working as an output only. Now here inside the void loop, we are running a for loop uh, starting from I is equal to zero to I is equal to 255. Basically, it's the binary counter kind of project that we are making here. Now here inside the for loop, first of all, we are, you know, uh, making the latch pin to go at the low state or digital zero. After that, we are using a shift out function. And after that, we are again, you know, putting that latch pin to high state. So basically, we are, uh, you know, making a digital uh, clock, you can say. So what happens is whenever the latch pin goes from low to high, whatever the state uh, of that particular flip flop is, it will be locked or it will be latched. Okay, so that that uh, state will be a fixed state, you can say, okay, so now the state will only change when again, that latch pin goes from zero to one, okay, so it is changing at the rising edge of the latch pin, okay, so that's the purpose of the latch pin, or you can say latch clock. Now, let's just see the purpose of the C, uh, shift register clock or the clock pin. So here it is used uh, inside the function called as shift out. So what we are doing is uh, we are first of all lowering down the latch pin and then we are serially sending the data to the data pin which is the serial uh, input of the shift register based upon the clock that is the clock for shift register and how we are sending is we are sending with uh, the format which is msb force that is most significant bit as the first bit and what we are sending is we are sending the data as I, which is nothing but a counter starting from zero to 255. Okay, so this data is sent serially to data pin. And after that, we are, you know, making that uh, last pin high. So it's a rising edge. So the data will be locked. Okay, and we are re repeating this step at a delay of 50 seconds. Oh, sorry, 50 milliseconds. So this is a kind of a binary counter. And after that, what we are doing is we are first of all turning off all the LEDs. And after the delay of one second, we are turning on all the LEDs. Okay, so that's a simple project that we have made. And if you look at this carefully, we are you know, doing the latch low and high uh, whenever we are sending the data. Okay, again, low and high and in between we are sending the data. So this is kind of a basic structure or basic code using which you can use the shift register for, you know, driving multiple outputs using just three uh, digital pins you can see great now i'll select the right board and com port which is already selected and i'll straight away hit the upload button okay as you can see the code is successfully uploaded and i will click on the reset button to start it all over again and as you can see first of all it is started the binary counter with all the eight leds and as soon as it completes the counting up to 255 it should blink with all the leds let's just wait for that particular thing Okay, so it blinked for uh, one uh, second of delay. And yeah, we are able to control all the LEDs simultaneously using just three digital pins of our ESP32 board. And we can do it with any of the microcontroller board. Isn't this amazing? And now in your case, if you want to control more than eight appliances, but still you have only left with three GPIO pins, well, you can still go with the shift registers in the cascade mode yes you can attach one shift register with another and create a series of shift register and control all those uh, appliances or leds or pins using just three gpio pins of your microcontroller let me show you how to cascade two shift register to control 16 leds with just three gpio pins so for that you need to connect two shift registers and leds and microcontroller according to this connection diagram 
And after that, in the code, there is no much change. There is only slight change as compared to the previous one, which is, uh, first of all, the shift out function is able to handle only one byte of data. That means only eight bit it can handle, okay? But uh, as we are using two shift register, each has one byte of data, like eight uh, LEDs on it. So we requires two bytes in total, okay? So what we can do is we can shift the, uh, you know, two bytes into high byte and low byte, and we can use the shift out function for two times. So this function will be responsible for the high, uh, higher byte, you can say, and this function will be responsible for the data in the lower byte, and we can control uh, like up to 16 appliances using this code. Other than that, the rest of the code is exactly the same. So first of all, we are turning on all the 16 LEDs, then we are turning off all the 16 LEDs. And after that, we are running a for loop with the delay uh, lesser than before, which is five millisecond. And it is like working in a binary counter manner, okay? So I already uploaded the code onto uh, this uh, ESP32 board. And if I turn on my smartphone's camera to let you know how this works, then, uh, here is the working of that project. Let me just press the reset button. So first, all the LEDs are on, all LEDs are off. And now, as you can see, it started the binary counter. But now with the help of two bytes, or you can say 16 LEDs, as we have connected two shift registers uh, in series with each other, okay? So yeah, uh, but still we are able to control all the 16 LEDs by just using three GPIO pins of ESP32 board. And you can increase it according to your demand, your choice, your application, your requirement. Just connect one shift register with another. Of course, the code will become a little bit complex, but ultimately you are saving a lot of GPIO pins in your project, okay? So yeah, that was all about using shift register to extend the GPIO pins to control the output, all output simultaneously, unlike that MUX DMUX IC that we have seen at the beginning of the video. So yeah, that was all about using shift register to get multiple output pins by just utilizing three GPIO pins of our microcontroller. And as I said, this can be used with any of the microcontroller that you have. I have used ESP32, but you can use ESP8266, Arduino, and wait. ESP8266, like ESP8266-01 has in total four GPIO pins. So we can use ESP8266-01 generic module for making a decent level automation project, like controlling up to four or five AC appliances, also controlling speed of one AC fan by just using ESP01. How's this project? Is it interesting? Well, do let me know down in the comments of the video. And if you all find it interesting, well, I definitely try to make the smallest home automation project using the Chota Wala ESP266 board and shift register and band dimming be karenge, appliances be control. I'll do that everything. Do let me know your suggestion down in the comments of the video. And yeah, do click the like button if you really find this video interesting and got to learn something new from it. And yeah, that being said, I'm just ending this video here and now just Wait for my next one, then explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.